Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about Enneagram Type 4. And I wanna begin this by saying I do have uh, several friends that are Type 4s, and uh, 4s are, uh, are great people. Um, this uh, study will probably seem kind of harsh. Um, already 4s tend to be very sensitive people, and I certainly don't intend to offend. Uh, my goal is to help you on your journey and to help you toward toward health. And also for those of you that live with fours who are significant in your life and family relationships or friendships to help you better understand what's going on in the mind of, of a person uh, who, who identifies as an Enneagram type four. Type fours, and I have my notes in front of me, so if I'm looking down, that's, that's what I'm looking at. Type fours are uh, often called the individualist or sometimes called the romantic. And I think this refers to the tendency in type fours to uh, be concerned about what's going on internally. They, they're looking inside themselves fundamentally to, to, to uh, decide and to get information about who they are and uh, what uh, authenticity is a very important um, component for fours is they want to be true to themselves and they want to be true to their own ideals. And so they're looking internally for um, uh, better understanding of who they are and what is important to them. Um, type fours, uh, everybody, I guess, feels at times like they're misunderstood, and I think nobody uh, feels this way more than type fours. Um, they they feel like they're in a struggle for uh, feeling significance. They can tend to be the most creative and interesting people on the enneagram, although they may not feel that way about themselves. Um, they want to maintain their identity by seeing themselves as fundamentally different than, than other people. So they tend to focus on those differences or those what they would maybe feel like deficiencies within themselves. That tends to focus, they focus and hone their attention on what they feel like is unique or special or different between them and others. And they end up building an identity around those deficiencies or around those differences, how unlike everyone else they are, how, uh, how unique they are from others. I think most people who are type fours, they tend to understand that they, they kind of march to the beat of a different drum. Um, it's not uncommon for fours when they start beginning to look at the Enneagram to resist it and say, no, there's no way that some kind of personality system or some kind of you know, um, personality profile can can capture what's going on in my life, and they'll feel like you know everybody else uh, on you know all the other types. Sure, they're simple, they're easy to understand. You can pin them down, and you know, but but me, I don't fit on anything like this. And they'll they'll, they'll often resist the enneagram or find or or, or resist seeing themselves as a four. They'll they may see themselves as a five you know, or a two or something else, but it's hard for them to admit that that they could be understood because that's the whole whole problem or whole situation they're facing is they feel like they're not understood and that nobody understands them and that they often don't understand themselves. And so to, to suggest that, no, we understand, uh, here's a system uh, called the Enneagram, here's a system of understanding personalities that completely understands what's going on inside your heart and mind. That can be an overwhelming thought to them that they may back away from and tend to resist, that oh, I don't really fit on any of these kind of personality charts, I, because that's the whole thing, I'm different. I, I don't, I, I'm not understandable, I'm, I'm unique, I'm special, I stand out. Which is ironic because at the real heart of this is they are not sure what it is about them that makes them unique. Uh, they're not, they haven't been able necessarily to identify what it is that makes them different, but they know they're different. They know they're different. They know they're flawed. They know there's something unique. There's something special. There's something broken, you might say, about them, something missing from them or missing in their life. And they probably have not been able to identify what that is. And so they're on a quest. They're on a search. And they can live their whole life in this search of trying this. And that search creates unrest, creates tension that I've got to discover what it is that makes me special, different, and unique. And, um, and so they may move from, from uh, you know, potential solutions to that problem, um, you know, thinking to themselves that, well, now I figured out what it is that's unique. And, and they hone in on, 
you know, uh, maybe the way they talk or maybe the way they look or the way they dress or the kind of music they listen to or the kind of foods that they eat or or understandings about their gender or understandings about sexuality. And, and it can just kind of um, move through all kinds of different um, aspects of life looking for what it is that makes me stand out, that makes me different, that makes me unique. I know I'm different. I know I'm flawed. I know I'm, you know, I, I, I don't fit into the systems. Now, what is it? And then once they have adopted that mindset, now they're on the quest of what is it that, that it is, is about me that makes me different. And so they often go searching inward toward their feelings as clues to help them understand what makes them set apart, what makes them different. And so they're not afraid to investigate their feelings. They're not afraid to investigate the deep things of life, the dark things of life, you might say, um, in order to get clues as to better understanding who they are and and what's important to them. Now, as a seven myself, you know, sevens tend to run away from those deep, dark, uh, introspective um, thoughts. We tend to try to flee you know, those dark things. In fact, we, we would think of them as dark things. And I don't think fours necessarily would think of dark things as dark things. Um, they would just say, you know, there's, there's light and darkness and both of them reveal information about yourself. And there's no need to hurry through those desperate times or those dark times because they're real. And, and I, and they would think I want to experience those dark things. Just like, uh, I exp the dark makes the light all that much lighter sevens don't think that way you know we think i want to run away from the dark and live in the light where fours i think say if you don't understand the darkness then you don't appreciate and i think we could learn a lot from fours in that regard so fours sometimes because they build an identity or tend to build an identity around how unique they are they tend to come across to the rest of us sort of elite or kind of like with an elitist attitude and i don't know that they necessarily intend on you know having an elitist attitude but it can come across to others uh on the enneagram that that they have an elitist attitude sort of like um you know i'm different than you so the rules don't apply to me okay so in that way they're they're similar to eights eights the challengers kind of feel like they're above the law like well the laws are for all those you know people out there that that want to pay attention to laws but you know, i'm going to do what i want to do fours tend to think that you know I'm different I'm special I'm unique I'm broken I don't fit in and so there's rules for everybody that are the normal people or the you know the mundane but then those rules don't necessarily apply to me um, I'm not saying that fours break the rules or the fours are lawbreakers but they may have sort of a disdain or a frustration with rules um, when applied to themselves. They can see every exception to the rule and so they see themselves as an exception. Um, everything is kind of done in their own way. Their mantra that they would kind of tell themselves is I am myself and nobody understands me. I'm different. I'm special. Um, or if they kind of have a darker tone, I'm broken. Um, while they secretly wish that they could enjoy the easiness and the confidence that it seems like everybody around them enjoys, they, um, they, they, they feel frustrated with life often because they don't feel like they uh, do fit in. Uh, they, they may secretly wish they could fit in, but they don't know how to fit in or they don't know what it would look like for them to fit in. Ones want to be good. Um, type one people want to be good and they want to leave the world a better place. Twos want to be loved and want to love others. Threes want to win. Fours want to matter, okay? Now, that's a good thing. I mean, um, if you watched my video on the threes, you know, threes could learn a lot from fours in this that, you know, what good is it to win the whole world and, and lose, you know, and not have any meaning or significance, any long-term purpose. And so fours are on that search for purpose. And so where your three child's going to go off and, you know, they're going to go to a prestigious university and they're going to try to have a great career and earn a lot of money and accomplish a lot, you know, and make a big impact, make a big splash, you might say. Fours, you know, may go off and join the Peace Corps uh, or go off and decide we're going to be missionaries. We're going to live off the land, live off the grid, and we're going to be missionaries because they're going to think in terms of like, I want my life to count for something important. I don't want to live my life trying to 
you know, earn money. I don't want to try to live my life for just, you know, um, collecting paper, green paper with president's faces on it. So they, they, they may think in terms of like, I want my life to count. I want my life to be meaningful. I want to enjoy a life with meaning. And so they're going to be drawn maybe away from what would traditionally be called success because to them, it just seems so superficial. They want something deep, something heavy, something important in life. That's why they may be drawn to the arts or drawn to poetry or drawn to um, you know, those, those things that communicate that depth and communicate that importance. The motivation for their life, simply said, is to find significance, to find meaning and significance. Fours are afraid that they have no personal importance um, and are less significant than others. That's the fear that's kind of driving them. They are continual, on a continual quest to search for their lost identity, and they feel like they're missing something in themselves. F sevens feel like we're missing out on something. Like there's some event over there that's going on, or there's some show on the television channel other than the one we're watching. We're in a movie theater, and we're wondering what the other movie next to us is like. We're on a ride at Disney World wondering what the other ride is going to be like. Um, and, and sevens in a very unhealthy place, you know, can miss everything that is in front of them because they're, they feel like they're missing out on something else. Fours feel like they personally are missing something. Like there's something about themselves that is out of place or out of touch or is missing. And so they're on that, so like sevens are on a continual search for, you know, a, a greater experience. Fours are on a greater search uh, are on a search for what is what has been taken from them or what is missing from them and so they're searching for their identity they're searching it's kind of like Eeyore you know in Winnie the Pooh he's lost his tail and so he's very melancholy he's very sad and fours can often be come across as very melancholy they're not afraid of sadness and so they can come across to the rest of us as melancholy and kind of like Eeyore who's on a petit on a proverbial search for his lost tail fours are kind of like in this melancholy state they can be in an unhealthy place in a melancholy state on a continual proverbial search for their lost personality their lost identity their lost significance okay so the past can be a big problem for fours. They can tend to nurse old wounds and grudges uh, or hold negative feelings to those that they don't think were there for them or supportive of them in the past. They uh, are, can be attached to longings within them. They're longing for something better. They're longing for maybe a rescuer. I don't know that they would put it in those terms, but they're longing for a rescuer who will come in and bring some comfort to them and bring a sense of identity to them and help them understand who they are in relationship to them and so they're kind of maybe longing for they have this sort of longing romantic i think that's why they might be called the romantic is because they have that longing for you know a better existence a better world a better experience um these attached longings and disappointments in the past if not you know tempered could render them um, unable to recognize many of the treasures that are in, uh, available in life right now. Fours ache to understand themselves and to be understood by the rest of us. So there is a longing with them in them to understand themselves, what's going on, and for ever others to understand and be more understanding of them, be more um, tolerant or temperate of them. Um, they deeply desire to know who they are. They, they're on a quest. This is the whole thing is they're searching for their identity. They're on a deep desire to know who they are. Um, fours may then try out several personalities over the span of their life. You know, they may be very susceptible to being goth. You know, that sets you apart after all. You know, I mean, if everybody's into football and everybody's into popular music and everybody's into iPads and, and um, you know, and into... Uh, and getting a car and a job and all those things. Again, fours are going to feel like those basic social norms don't necessarily apply to them. And so they may not be at all interested in getting a car, getting a driver's license or getting a, um, a job or, you know, making it onto the band team because all those things are what normal people do. I'm not normal. I'm different. And so you know, they may uh, seek to differentiate themselves away from others in the way they dress. And uh, 
you know, and so they, they, will, they will look at other people and they will look for what's different about them. Where twos are always looking for what we have in common. You know, a two is going to say, oh, you're from Indiana? I'm from Indiana. Oh, your dad was a uh, uh, mayor of his town? Well, my dad was the mayor of his town. Well, we have so much in common. Twos are always making connections. Fours are doing exactly the opposite. They're saying, what is it that sets you apart? What is it that sets him apart? What is it that's different? And then they may be drawn to those differences and even adapt them into their own life and try them on for a while. But, you know, that's the kind of the thing the rest of us see is when everybody, you know, different looks exactly the same, in a sense, is they all look different. And that can be very frustrating to fours when they take so much time to differentiate themselves and only look like other people that have differentiated themselves. And so they're all kind of walking around campus different than everybody else. Most people, what fours you need to realize is most people don't think about this stuff. They just don't think about it. They... Uh, they, they, they wake up, they put on jeans. They wake up, they put on khakis because that's what they have. They don't, they, a lot of people want to fit in. They just wake up, they put on khakis, they put on jeans, they put on a t-shirt, they put on a shirt, and they give very little thought often to it. Now threes might think about it, how they're coming across and how neat and put together they are, but most people are just waking up and putting on clothes and getting a cheap haircut and, uh, you know, practicing personal hygiene and they just go do their work, school, family, whatever, go through the events of their life without giving very little thought to any of this. Fours give a lot of thought to this. They, they look at it and say, well, everybody's wearing khakis and everybody's wearing jeans. Well, then I can't wear those. I've got to wear something different because I know inside I'm different. And so they may, now this is maybe unhealthy fours. If you're hearing this and you're a four, you may be offended and say, this is not true. I'm going to, you know, okay, um, maybe you're in a very healthy place and you don't think like this, okay? And that's great. I celebrate that. That's awesome. But I think a typical or an unhealthy maybe say, and realize all of us in America, I mean, very unhealthy in our, in our personalities, very tied to our personalities and to the brokenness of our personalities, all of us. I'm not picking on fours. I mean, we all have our problems. Watch the other videos, okay? And you'll see that I, I, I get down and dirty and pretty serious with, with every type. But fours are, you know, looking and realize how much this backs you in a corner. If you believe that if everybody's wearing jeans, for example, blue jeans, okay? And by the way, threes are very concerned with the label often, you know, uh, and maybe sixes because sixes want to fit in. Threes want to stand out. And so sixes are, everybody wears Levi's and sixes are going to wear Levi's. All right. I know I'm oversimplifying things, but be patient with me. I'm just trying to make a point. Okay. A metaphor. If, if everybody's wearing Levi's and sixes think, well, I need to wear Levi's so I fit in. Threes are going to say, well, I need to wear whatever diesel so I stand out, you know, because my jeans cost three times as much as everybody else's jeans. Fours are going to look at it and say, well, I'm not going to wear jeans. If everybody's wearing jeans, I don't care what kind of jeans they are, then I'm going to wear something different. You know, I'm going to wear white pants or I'm going to wear plaid pants or I'm going to wear... Sevens might wear unique, different stuff, but it's for a totally different reason. Sevens are going to wear it and say, wait till they get a load of this. This will really crack them up. When they see me coming in with these blue polyester pants, they're going to laugh and, and I'm going to make everybody feel good. Okay, fours aren't thinking that way. They're thinking, I'm going to put on these different pants that, that nobody else wears and then people will see that I'm different. In other words, this is who I am now. This, this, is, this, is, this reflects who I am now. I'm different, so my clothing needs to be different. But then you find yourself maybe walking around campus and seeing other fours or other people that are setting themselves apart and probably are frustrated with them. They're doing the same thing you're doing, but you may look at it and go, oh, and that's that kind of elitist attitude that I was talking about earlier is fours can kind of walk around campus looking at everybody in khakis and jeans saying, oh, vulgarians, look at them, just, just fitting in, just so trying desperately hard to fit in. But then you'll look across campus and you'll see another person who's standing out and look at them and maybe go, oh, look at them trying so hard to stand out. And that's that kind of elitist attitude that you probably don't even recognize about yourself. Okay, so is this stinging yet? If this is stinging yet, then we're on the track, right? We're, we're healing. 
And it's important that before you can cure the disease, you have to know what the disease is, right? You have to be able to identify what the problem is or what the challenges are before you can offer a remedy. So we're gonna get to the remedies, all right? Um, so fours deeply desire to be known. Um, they want to be known. They want to be understood. And they want to understand themselves. But like I said, they may try on several different identities. Underneath the surface, they may not really feel very certain about who they are. Um, and this is this is kind of the problem: is they start to begin this. They start to begin this to believe this. Like threes begin to believe the clothes make the man. So I am my successes. My successes uh, give me a clue as to who I am. You know what I've accomplished and achieved. That's who I am, right? And twos can start to believe I am who I am because of all the connections that I have, because I'm a loved, a much loved father or a much loved mother or a much loved grandmother. Well, then that's who I am. That's my identity. I'm a much loved, you know. Well, what if people turn against you? Then who are you? You see, that's the problem. Um, you're building your identity based on you know the expectations and and definitions that others have assigned to you. Okay, so here's what the four does. They begin to, to, to investigate deep internally into their feelings, okay? Because they are in the feeling group, right? Twos, threes, and fours are in the feeling group. And feelings come first for fours. Or, or for, yeah, for fours. Feelings come first, and then thinking comes second, okay? And then action is last. All right, so in other words, they fe you feel something as a four. You feel frustration, or you feel uh, like you're not being accepted, Okay, or you feel like you're being um, uh, made fun of or humiliated or whatever it is you feel. Maybe you feel happy. And then you begin to think about what you feel. You begin to overthink about what you feel. And you begin to dwell on your feelings. And you look at your feelings as though they are clues as to your identity. But at any given moment, you may just be feeling what you're feeling and they may not be very good clues necessarily as to who you are. It may just be that you're just feeling something and the feeling could pass. You know, maybe you don't have to analyze, overanalyze your feelings. I feel like I'm not fitting in, so why am I not fitting in? That's the, that's the way the thinking goes. I feel like I'm not fitting in in this group and so then you begin to obsess on why you begin to think about your feelings. And you could just let that feeling pass and say, I feel like I'm not fitting in. Oh, well, maybe I am, and I'm just, I don't need to analyze, overanalyze this feeling. But fours begin to believe, I am what I feel. Okay? Let that sink in for a minute. I am what I feel. Um, you can see the inherent danger in that. What if you feel miserable? Well, I guess then you are miserable. Okay, so there's some inherent danger in this. If I am what I feel, your feelings are like a kaleidoscope. Um, if you search internally at your feelings, they're ever changing. And these ever shifting feelings create an ever shifting personality. Okay, um, fours are often attracted to all things that are beautiful and meaningful, uh, art and aesthetics. Uh, they can walk into a room, you know, and immediately, like an artist, think maybe how it should look to make it look more warm, more attractive, more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but here's the thing. Fours can tend to um, surround themselves not with just beautiful things, but also with dark things, okay? They, they are surrounding themselves with meaningful things, okay? Let's call them props. Props, okay? So you may look on one wall and see, you know, a very hideous picture or a very hideous, you know, statue of some kind, maybe something grotesque, like a goblin or something like that. And then on the other wall, you look over and you see something very beautiful, something very attractive, you know, maybe some kind of beautiful painting of a, of a human figure or, you know, of a... Um, a skyline or something like that. These things provide fours with with something to look at to stimulate emotion. So when when you look at this hideous, you know, um, gargoyle or something, it it sparks an emotion. Okay, so what you're trying to do is through props, beauty, attractive and unattractive things, or or meaningful things, is you're trying to 
strike emotions that can then help you identify your personality. Okay, stick with me. I know this is a little complicated. But if you want to feel sadness, then you need to look at the things that will spark sadness in your life. And so maybe you have something on this wall and something on this shelf that will spark that sadness. And then you can feel, to some degree, sadness. Okay, so if you want to feel joy, maybe you have other things around the room that can spark joy. And so if I look at this picture or this, you know, maybe something that was given to me, this prop, it will spark joy. And if I want to, if I want, whatever. And so by attempting to control your emotions, it's like you're trying to control and understand and develop and fix and repair your personality. My personality, I don't know who I am, and so I'm gonna get in touch with my feelings, and right now I want to feel joy, or right now, and so you're trying to control your emotions with these props. Okay, so I think that's what the props and things is all about, is the aesthetics, is I wanna be surrounded by meaningful objects, meaningful decorations, because those can help trigger certain emotions. And if I, if I can't control who I am, if I don't know who I am, at least I can control my emotions or try to control my emotions, which help me get a sense of my identity. I realize that's pretty complex. But um, um, I think that's what's going on. And again, I'm not a four. I'm just trying to understand what I think is going on. It's kind of like when I, when I turn on you know a certain type of music let's say i turn on jazz it makes me sort of feel or let's say like relaxation music you know um or jazz it it, it can kind of like relax you so what are you doing you're trying you're attempting now this is not for stuff this is just everybody stuff you're attempting to control your mood with a certain kind of music all right okay so if I wanted to feel more upbeat and more excited, well, then maybe I would switch that over to, um, you know, dance music or pop music. If I wanted to feel more nostalgic and sentimental, I would go back and maybe listen to 80s music, okay? So I can control to some degree my emotional state through a prop of music, okay? I think that maybe makes sense. I think that's kind of what fours are doing with a lot of things, not just music, but also clothing um, and also the decorations and colors that they choose in their house or colors that they choose in their in their room. And 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 one way of expressing all of that is through art. Um, And so if I can control and manipulate my emotions, uh, at least I can control that. That's kind of the idea. If I don't know who I am and I don't my, know my personality and I feel like I have to look to my emotions to give me clues as to who I am, how can I get in control of these emotions? Well, one way you can try to control them is through props. Okay, music, art, colors, uh, and the things that you surround yourself with. I think that's what's going on um, in, in the life and in the mind of a four. Fours can be stuck in their feelings um, and can check out of the real world, you might say, or uh, and over-identify with their own flaws and believe that they'll never really fit in with others, that they're so unlike all the rest of humans and human beings that no one could ever really understand them adequately and therefore love them adequately. Okay, and that's a very sad place, you know, to, to, to go in your mind. They often see themselves then, uh, you know, in the positive as uniquely talented, possessing one-of-a-kind gifts. Um, But also the dark side is uniquely flawed or uniquely disadvantaged. So the root sin of fours is what? Envy. Envy. Wanting what others have. And I think the way that looks like in a four is everybody else seems to know who they are. Everybody else seems to just wake up and be somebody without little thought to it. You know, they wake up, they put on their jeans, they put on their khakis, like I said before. They live in relationship with other people. You know, uh, Frank over there, he's Sam and and Tina's dad and uh, Jill's husband, and he works at the quarry. Seems like he knows who he is. It seems like he never even thinks about who he is. He seems like he fits in just fine. Seems like he's got a job and he relates to people and he 
So everybody else, this is the envy, everybody else seems to know who they are. They seem to know what they're about. They found their meaning, their purpose. And it's like they're not even questioning all of this. They're just going off and, and everything seems to be working for them. But here a four is, is kind of stuck saying, who am I? A am I the only ones that are thinking these deep thoughts? You know, where do I fit in? What makes me unique? What makes me stand out? What, you know, Jack seems to know who he is. How come I don't know who I am? Jack seems to go to work every day with a very clear sense of purpose and meaning. And here I am stuck. You know, what am I going to do with my life? And what am I... And, and so they just kind of envy what everybody else seems to have. Everybody else seems to be connected, engaged. And I seem to be broken and flawed and, and, and stuck. So everybody else is living these normal lives and they don't want to be normal. Okay, that's the thing. Force don't want to be normal. Uh, they want to differentiate themselves, but then they're envious that everybody seems to, to make it and everybody seems to you know, have all these advantages, but, but then they have all these disadvantages. So they chase after what they perceive everyone else has. And when they finally arrive at these idealized, the romantic ideas of what a relationship is going to be like, oh, it's going to be so great. It's going to be, you know, when this person comes in, sweeps me off my feet, it's going to be, you know, love made and broken hearts. And, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be just this, this euphoric kind of relationship. Well, you know, the reality is, is most of these is very idealized. It's very romantic, but people don't often live up to our idealistic, romantic ideas, right? And so what's going to come? Disappointment. Disappointment. Fours live in a perpetual state of disappointment because nothing ever really lives up to this sonnet, you know, that you've, you've perpetuated in your mind. And so fours can very easily get lost in a idealized, romanticized view of the way life is supposed to be. I think about that song by Jewel, who is probably a four, you know, these foolish games, you know, and her heart is breaking because this person, you know, that she'd idealized didn't live up to the expectations. And so, you know, he's off smoking a cigarette and reading his newspaper and making comments about the weather. What's more, what's more, what's more mundane than the weather? And here, Jewel, her heart is just breaking, you know, breaking. And that's, I think, where fours live. That's their address, is their heart is just breaking. And the rest of us are just smoking cigarettes and making comments about the weather. Okay? Because fours are such so in touch with these deep, significant, romantic, idealized, uh, uh, dreamy, you might say, kind of the way life should be in this depth. And, this, and the rest of us are just, you know, making comments on the way. And there's that elitism again. Okay? So fours often feel empty, disappointed, frustrated with life, um, melancholy, okay? Melancholy, that's where it comes from. All right, so healthy fours are self-aware people who are in touch with their own feelings and their inner impulses. They're extremely creative. They have a tendency to not only think outside the box, but live outside the box and there's that kind of idea of rules don't apply to me because I'm not in the box I'm outside the box they're captivated by beauty they're on a continual search to better understand themselves and their own idea their identity they're very sensitive and intuitive they like to express themselves and are highly personal and here's a very important concept for fours authentic fours want to be authentic in fact they will demand you be authentic or they probably won't want to have anything to do with you anymore if you're not real See, threes, you can learn a lot because threes, deceit, right? Threes may be afraid of being authentic because people will reject me. So I've got to, I've got to polish up the image. Fours are not about that, right? Fours want to be authentic, genuine, and real. And if people don't like it, they can, they can stick it, right? Because fours, they want to be authentic and they're going to demand. Now, this makes them great counselors at times. They're not afraid to go to the depths of despair with you. They will walk through tragedy with you. And if, you've, if you're going through a hard time in life, you're going through a difficult time, a seven may run away from you or say, hey, let's, let's go out and, and, and escape you know, the night. Let's go out in the night. Let's escape all of this and have a good time. Fours will sit there and let you weep and will weep with you. And the darker it gets, the more they'll lean in. 
They're not going to run away from it. They're not afraid to go there. And this is what makes fours great, sometimes great counselors, is they are able to go to those depths of despair um, uh, with you. Okay, so fours, and, and they'll want you to be authentic. They don't want you to, to color things better than they are. Just be real. Be real. Be yourself. That's the whole thing. Fours are trying to be real and be themselves if they could just get a sense of who themselves are. That's the challenge. Okay. So, um, okay. So, fours hate superficiality. They seek authentic expression. Their music and their art can be so real and passionate. Oh, yeah, this is something I was going to say. So, I talked a minute about, about fours painting themselves into a corner. Um, what I mean is this, if everybody wears khakis and jeans, then you can't, if you feel like you have to be different, then you, then you, so you now, what are you left with? Well, probably what the rest of us would think of as strange. Okay. And so fours kind of grow up maybe thinking and hearing at least they're weird and that frustrates them because they're not trying to be weird. Um, that's not their goal, but at the same time, they kind of, they kind of flattered, they kind of are flattered by that. What what fours hate the most is ambivalence when you just ignore them. It it it's when they don't stand out that that I think fours get nervous, right? So, I think fours would like to fit in, but more than anything is they they don't want to just disappear. They they don't want to disappear to life and in life. But, you know, if everybody loves Mexican food, which I'm a big fan, if everybody loves Mexican food and, then, and you feel like you have to be different, then now I guess you can't eat Mexican food, okay? It's kind of like, well, if uh, I'm not going to wear polyester. I'm not going to. I don't like popular music because everybody likes popular music. That's why it's popular, right? But I don't like popular music. Oh, country? Oh, I hate country music. That's, ugh. Ugh, Bulgarians listen to country music. Oh, you know, Bulgarians wear uh, blue jeans. Oh, Bulgarians. And so what do you have left? You see, you start to differentiate yourself so much that you may be missing out on a lot of things that you could enjoy in life if you could just relax and not feel like you have to be different than everybody. Okay. I can't stand those people just sit around and watch TV all day. Well, there's a lot of good television. Maybe you're missing something, you know, that you could enjoy. But well, I can't watch TV because that's what Bulgarians do. You know, I can't. And so you may be painting yourself into a corner and missing out on a lot of the things in life you could enjoy. But, oh, I, I, don't, I don't eat dairy or I don't eat wheat or I don't eat, you know, meat or I don't eat. And the list goes on and on and on of how different you are. But uh, caution, you may be missing out on a lot of things that you could be enjoying that can make life more meaningful. But... Since everybody else is doing it, you feel like you can't. Okay. All right. So fours are often called, you know, the deep sea divers of the soul. They're willing to go to those depths. And that's one of the things I appreciate about you guys. Um, they'll help not only not only do fours get in touch with their deep emotions, but they, they can help me get in touch with the deep emotions that I may be trying to avoid as a seven. So you guys can help me with that. Um Sadness for most of us is a bad thing. We want to avoid it. You know, people start crying. What do they do? They start wiping their eyes, you know, and they start sucking it up because they may be even ashamed that they're showing weakness, you know, by being sad. Um, sadness for most of us is a burden, but fours don't necessarily think of sadness as a burden or something to be avoided. It's something to be appreciated. It's something to, it's a clue to helping you understand, you know, who you are. Sadness is just another aspect of themselves, uh, something else that needs to be explored. Um, they're not afraid of the ugly pain of brokenness and heartache. And so they even write songs about it. And that's one of the reasons we there's so many great four songwriters is, is because they're willing to get in touch with those emotions that most of us want to bury. That's why they're the deep sea divers, okay? They're profoundly creative, expressing themselves and their emotions through music, poetry, art, the way they dress, and in many other ways. Um, okay, so fours can have a dark side. We've been talking about it, but let me go a little deeper. When fours focus on what, what is missing, it makes them hard to be happy. It's hard to be satisfied when you're constantly focusing on what you're missing or what's missing in you or what's different in you. Um, fours have a tendency to intensify or to amp up their personal feelings. Sevens amp up 
the intensity, uh, the energy, okay? And they wanna keep the energy light so that they don't feel scared. That's videos coming later. Fours are not dealing with fear, they're dealing with shame. Th twos, threes, and fours are in the feeling group, they're in the shame group, okay? Well, let me explain that a little bit. Twos say, well, how do I know I'm a person of value and worth? Maybe I need to be ashamed. No, I'll be helpful to you, and then I have nothing to be ashamed of because I'm here to help you. I don't have any needs. Twos don't have needs. That's what they think. I don't have any needs. I'm here to help you. That's pride is their sin, okay? So they run away from the shame cloud. Think of it as a cloud trying to get over your head. And twos get away from the shame cloud by saying, I don't have needs. I'm here to help you. I'm here to take care of you. I know I'm valuable because of what I've done for you. After all, I've rescued you. And twos are always on a rescue mission, okay? Threes, the shame cloud's coming for them too. No, I don't need to be ashamed because... I'm ahead of everybody else. I've accomplished more than everybody else. Look at what I've earned. Look at what I've achieved. Look at what I've accomplished. And so I have nothing to be ashamed of because I've accomplished so much. But it's shame that's driving them to accomplish all of that, okay? And to achieve all of that. I'm ahead of you, so I have nothing to be ashamed of. You're behind me, okay? Fours, the shame cloud is over your head too, all right? How do I know I'm a person of value? How do I know I'm a person of worth? Am I lovable? That's the same thing twos and threes are facing. It's the same question fours are facing. Am I lovable? Am I worthy of love? Shame cloud is over your head. How do you get away from it? I'm not like everybody else. I'm different. Okay? After all, I am worthy of rescue. And so fours will differentiate themselves away in a bid that others would come and rescue them back. Now, I know the tension is rising within you as you hear this. You're going to think, oh, well, this guy's lost his mind. I'm going to make an angry comment here because he doesn't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, let me show you what this looks like. A four, everybody in the room is laughing. You're at a family reunion. Everybody's enjoying themselves laughing. Everybody seems to know who they are in relationship to all the rest of the family. What's a four feeling right now? A disconnection. They're feeling like they don't fit in. They're feeling like they don't belong. They look at this family and they say, okay, I get it. Everybody here is all related and I'm related to them, but I must be more than just, you know, a Johnson. So they're related to all these Johnsons or Smiths or whoever this family is. Everybody's laughing, having a great time, enjoying themselves. You look over and you look at the four and there's tears welling up in their eyes. And they're not connecting. They're disconnecting. Everybody's connecting. What are they doing? The opposite disconnecting and they're saying everybody seems to know who they are they're all smiths i've got to be more than just a smith who am i i must be different than this and so everybody's laughing having a good time where's the four going away from the group they're going away from the group in sorrow and maybe two or three people will follow after them is everything okay is everything all right we love you it's going to be okay and they're trying to draw you back, and you know you're a person of value and worth because somebody came after you and rescued you and brought you back. Okay, the opposite. Go the opposite scenario. You're at a funeral and everybody's crying. Everybody's upset and everybody's hurt and everybody's crying, everybody's down, everybody's depressed. What's the four doing? Maybe snickering over to themselves. Look at all these people. They, there's, they can't handle. Look, they just go around in their lives as if death is never going to get them. And then when it gets somebody, they lose their minds and they're all in tears. <laughs> and they're kind of snickering to themselves. They're doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing. Everybody's at a concert. And we're all having a great time. The four runs to the bathroom in tears. Two people go run after them. And then they may, they, they're, they're feeling something, but they may not know how to express it. And so if you, you come you chase that person out and sit with them in the bathroom, they're going to tell you, my grandmother's dying of cancer. I don't know what I'm going to do. My life's just going down the, you know. There's not a tear in their eyes because they don't really care that their grandmother's dying of cancer. That's not the problem. The problem is, is I don't fit in. Everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. I feel the opposite. I feel the opposite. And so they may come up with a reason why they're running away, but the, that may not really be the reason. The reason is, is I know I've got to be something else than this. Who am I? It's an identity question. So I don't need to be ashamed because I'm not like everybody else. 
I'm different. And at the end of the day, it's, it's shame that fours are running away from. It's that sense of worthlessness. Am I a person of value? Well, you know, of course, obviously you can see Bibles behind my shelf here and you see I got a church name on my shirt. I work at a church. So, you know, as a Christian, we understand where our sense of worth comes from. It doesn't come from what I accomplished, like threes. It doesn't come from my connections with other people, like twos. It doesn't come from the fact that I stand out and I'm different, like fours. Our value comes in our, that we are intrinsically designed by a creator and have a thumbprint on us of divinity that makes us uh, a people of value simply because we are created for a purpose and created by purpose and on design. And so I know a lot of people don't share that view and that's okay. Um, you can still be helped by the Enneagram, uh, but you're gonna have to deal with these issues of value and worth because that at the core is what's going on. That, that at the core is the challenge is, am I a person of value and worth? Only if I differentiate myself or what if I'm just like everybody else? Would I still be a person of value and worth? You got to figure out your answers for that. All right. So fours fear loss and abandonment and separation. They separate themselves from others, but that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of being separate from others. Um, they can be very sensitive. They feel both flawed and missing something in life and at the same time unique and elite. So there's a paradox there. They often feel like outsiders, like they're on the outside looking in. Uh, to life. They're suspicious of personality profiles. We've already talked about that. And they may have grown up hearing that they were weird and they didn't fit in and that bothered them. But at the same sense, they're kind of proud of it because they don't necessarily want to fit in. What they hate is when people ignore them and are apathetic to them. They at times withdraw from others to sort out their deep feelings. Fours also are in a push-pull dynamic with people. Okay, so they'll, they'll move in and be close with you, but then they'll kind of, like a cat, scratch you and run away from you. And you think, what did I do wrong? You didn't necessarily do anything wrong. This is what's going on. A four leans in and they say, okay, I love you. I know I'm in relationship with you. I'm your husband. I'm your wife. I'm your child. I'm your parent, whatever. But then they start to have those doubts of, is this all, is this all I am? Is your husband or your wife, is this all I am? You know, and so because that uneasiness of their identity creeps up, they will scratch at you, not physically, maybe, but they will push you away and and distance themselves from you. OK, and they've got to sort out all of those deep feelings and sort out all of that because they're going to feel and think they're going to feel and think. And so they're going to push away from you, take time to sort out all those feelings and maybe wait for you to come bring them back into the relationship. And so it's called the push-pull dynamic, or if you think of an animal, a cat. You know, this is what cats do. Dogs, you basically look at them, right? And they come over <laughs> and they wanna be, they want attention and they will sit there and they will endure lots and lots of attention, right? And give you lots of attention. Cats, on the other hand, you know, we think of them as temperamental moody you know they they'll come when they're ready and you you're petting a cat and you think everything's going great and then rah, they bite you right or they scratch you and fours can be kind of like that in your life um they move in and get close but then they seek to differentiate themselves and so they push away from you not necessarily even knowing why they're doing it okay um, but they want to be original and authentic to themselves and their feelings, and so they'll push away from you. And they'll say, I love my family. I, those relationships are important to me, but that isn't what defines me. There must be more to me than just being their son or being their husband. Okay. Um, not so much I'm better than you, but I'm different than you, and the rules don't necessarily apply to me. Social norms and dress. Um, so, you know, everybody shows up at work in basically the same kind of work appropriate clothing. A four may show up in the same uniform, but they'll differentiate themselves maybe in the way they wear that uniform or maybe some pin they're wearing or the way they do their hairstyle or maybe they paint something on their face, you know. Um, they're just not sure that the uniform specifically applies to them as it applies to everybody else. So they want to, maybe the kind of earrings they wear or stand out, make them different, whatever. Um, they're afraid of being unnoticed, unseen, unheard. Um, no one's going to see me. No one cares about me. Uh, so they're kind of hiding that shame uh, of feeling ordinary. Okay? Like being ordinary is a shameful thing. Oh. 
those people over there just doing the same mundane things in life. There's a shame associated with that being ordinary and they're rising above that or away from that, you might say. Some examples of fours in our culture, Proverus, Professor Severus Snape on, on uh, Harry Potter, uh, Edward Scissorhands, Johnny Depp, um, April Ludgate on Parks and Recreation, Arthur from King of Queens, uh, Kurt Cobain, Bob Dylan, Michael Jackson, Prince, Elton John, Boy George, Jewel, Lady Gaga, Amy Winehouse, Jim Morrison, Alanis Morissette, The Music of Pink Floyd, Judy Garland, Michelangelo, uh, Claude Monet, Vincent Van Gogh, Salvador Dali, Edgar Allan Poe, Anne Rice, and Gene Wilder. Okay, so there's a good, there's a lineup there of people that are different, right? They are different. You. Go back, rewind that, listen to that list again. Look up pictures of them. I don't have time to show you all those pictures, but they're different. A four with a wing three is called the aristoc aristocrat, okay? They're more flamboyant. They create with the audience in mind, and they kind of say, I'm really different, I really am unique, and you're going to love me for it. I'm a performer. I'm going to be the biggest and the best at being different. Um, and they may deliberately dress sort of to stand out. And they are tend to be emotionally more charged and intense. The four wing five is called the Bohemian, and it's enough for them maybe to know they're different. They don't have to display it all the time, um, and they enjoy the process of creation and discovery more than the presentation of that differences. And the real world is less authentic to them and real to them than their inner landscape, and so they're very kind of stuck in that inner world. Um, they may know they're different, but they don't go out of the way to show it. They're more intellectual than the four wing three, and they may reveal their uniqueness in the way they talk um, more than in the way they look. And so they'll kind of, maybe if you get them alone, they'll say, you know, this world is going to hell in a handbasket, and I just don't know why people do the things that they do. And uh, people are just vastly mistaken the way they eat. They eat all this, you know, uh, non-organic food and oh, it's just terrible you go to Dunkin Donuts oh I would never do that um, I'll never you'll never see me being a part of that a three mom might say my kids are on the honor roll my kids accomplish my kids win my kids are on the team a four moms like my kids are learning Latin my kids only drink raw milk my kids you know wear uh, only cotton you know so they're gonna be different and they're special because they're different where the threes mom is their kids are special because of what they can accomplish and that they're winners and the two mom their kids are special because they're nice and they're kind and they're so loving and so friendly um, fours reject anyone or anything in life that doesn't support their self-image they become increasingly dependent on a few people to maintain that way of life and may be frustrated with people they don't feel like are being supportive of them everybody's let me down and so they can kind of alienate themselves away from others and since you know a deep sense of futility and meaninglessness in life they have feelings of self-contempt at times and an irrational hatred of others whom they believe have let them down and th those thoughts torment them they may begin to feel worthless and hopeless becoming uh, you know self-despair and self-destructive force tend to use their imagination to stimulate and prolong emotional reactions um, Again, they look inward to their emotions. Uh, they can become very fussy and perfectionistic about what they want in life. Uh, we talked about their root sin of envy. Um, they can deprive themselves of things that are meant to be enjoyed because they want to be different and differentiate themselves as children. As children, fours may have felt disconnected from their parents and decided to look on, inward to their own feelings and imaginations for their sense of idea I identity they felt cut off from the source of love for reasons they couldn't understand and as a result they turned inward to their own feelings and imaginations to cope with that isolation their basic fear is of having no identity and no personal significance their basic desire is to be themselves to find themselves and their significance to create an identity out of their inner experience and the message they tell themselves is you are good or okay if you're true to yourself withdrawn fours when they're unhealthy uh, they, they are in a withdrawn state when they're unhealthy they d disintegrate into compliant twos and what that means is is when when a four is under stress you'll know it because they'll look like a two they'll be making up with you they feel like maybe their scratch or their push away from you has been too severe 
And so now under stress, they're coming back to try to reestablish this relationship. And so now they seem friendly again. They want to get up in your lap and they want to purr. And so you feel like, oh, things are good again. They're under stress. It's a sign that that, that four has been thinking to themselves, uh-oh, maybe I've gone too far. Maybe I'm going to be disconnect. Maybe this person's going to disconnect from me totally. So under stress, they'll come back with kindness and friendliness and remind you of all the good they've done for you, like a two, remind you of how important you are to them and how they are to you. And so that's a sign they're under stress. When fours are secure and healthy, guess what number they go to? Ones. Think about what a one does. They do what needs to be done. When fours are healthy, they quit all of this speculating on their feelings. And they just wake up and say, here's some things I got to get done today. In other words, they show up to life. They get present to life. They never become a one. They still have those deep, inner, meaningful feelings and thoughts. But they're able to set those aside for a minute and say, maybe my feelings don't determine who I am. And maybe I need to just show up at work in my uniform and get my job done. And that's when fours are healthy. When they just show up and get their tasks done that need to be done. Here's the word mundane, when they can just do the mundane. Now, they'll never do them in just a completely mundane way, but when fours can just say, maybe I'm normal, maybe I have a personality, maybe I'm not inherently flawed. The healing message is maybe I'm not inherently flawed, maybe I'm okay, maybe I have a personality, maybe people do know who I am, and maybe they love me and accept me for who I am, and even if I haven't sorted out all the details of what's my life and where my meaning and purpose and all that come from, maybe I do have meaning and purpose and maybe I'm not inherently flawed and maybe I can just show up and do my job and do my work and be present to relationships and love people and accept them for who they are and be present in those relationships. Maybe my feelings are not necessarily always the best source of information for me and maybe I can set my feelings aside for a moment and just do what needs to be done in life. There's your healing path. That's when fours move to one. That's when fours move to integration. They show up to life. Um, They overcome that sort of self-absorption and self-consciousness and just, and all those subjective moods um, and uh, show up to life. Okay, let's see. Twos. We already talked about that. Threes, fours, okay. Um, Let's talk about um, the steps toward healing and health. Okay, last thing. I want to I want to try to keep this to uh, an hour, and I appreciate you sticking with me for this long. Most people would have checked out by now, but I hope this has been helpful for you. So, steps toward healing and health. Number one. So what do you do with this, this information you've just learned? Number one, don't pay so much attention to all of your stormy feelings, okay? They come and they go, they come and they go, they come and they go. If you were talking to me as a seven and I felt like as a seven, man, I feel anxious, I feel like maybe I need to know what else is on TV. You might look at me and say, look, Tom, just settle down and just enjoy the show that's on. Don't worry about what you're missing. Just enjoy the show that's on. See, if I'm always changing channels, I can't enjoy any channel. That's the way sevens live, is always changing channels. But they can't enjoy any program because they won't sit with it long enough, okay? So for a four, let me say to you, all right? Let me me talk to you for a second. Don't pay so much attention to your feelings. You feel stuff, let it pass. You don't have to act on every feeling. You don't have to let every feeling inform and say, well, I feel unwanted, so I guess I'm unwanted, okay? Your feelings are not necessarily a true support for you. Don't equate your identity with what you're feeling. You don't need to understand all of your feelings before you take action or move to action. Always remember that your feelings are not telling you something, are only telling you something about yourself at that particular moment, not necessarily anything more than that. Okay, number two, avoid putting things off until you're in the right mood. That probably just stung a little bit. Commit yourself to being productive and doing meaningful work and making a contribution to others. Not just when you're inspired, but on a daily basis. I know that's what normal mundane people do, and that's your path to health. 
Fours are extremely creative and they're innovators and they have new vision and they have fresh ideas. So you're never gonna be a one. You don't have to be afraid that you're gonna fall into this just this one category. You're always going to do those mundane things in your own unique way, okay? And that's what's gonna make you excel and make us appreciate you so much. You always envision a better world than yesterday. Work consistently in the real world though. Don't let yourself be so absorbed in the better world of what could be the idealized world that you're not present to the real world. So think about the way things could be and then start bringing those into the way things are, okay? The real world. You're happiest when you're working. But if you're an unhealthy four, you may not have been working for a long time. You're so frustrated, so upset, so let down by others, so depressed, so disheartened, so melancholy that it's hard for you to suck it up and go to work. But you are happiest when you go to work. You're happiest when you lose your identity. Oh, what an overwhelming thought for a four. When you just lose this quest and this search for identity and just show up to life and just do what needs to be done. You'll find yourself happiest when you're making a contribution, when you're working, being productive, okay? You will not find yourself in a vacuum, so stay connected with others. Oh, I can't, I don't know who I am when I'm in a relationship to my family. I must be something different than this, so you move away from them. You're happiest and you'll find your identity best when you're in connection with other people. You don't need to isolate yourself to know who you are. You don't need to go to Boulder, Colorado, you know, to find yourself. You can find yourself best in relationship with other people. All right. Number three, self-esteem and self-confidence will develop only from having positive experiences, whether you believe you're ready for them or not. You are ready to take on the challenges of the world, even if you don't feel like you are. You're ready. If you'll show up, you don't need any more time to get yourself together, stop putting your life on hold, and commit to doing something worthwhile in the present world as it is. Number four, practice self-discipline. Discipline. Sleep regular hours, eat a regular diet, um, exercise regularly. Self-discipline is not contrary to freedom and all the things that you want to experience in life. They're not, not the enemy. It'll make, it'll make you more creative. Think of self-discipline as the easel and the canvas. It's not the art. But now the art can be expressed because there's form and structure. So regular hours, regular job, regular clothes, regular whatever, that's your, that's your easel, okay? It's not the art. You're now able to put the art into that. Number five, avoid lengthy conversations in your own imagination. Um, I'm just gonna let that one go for now. Six, talk openly with someone you trust. Find somebody you can be authentic with that will not run away from you when you share these deep things in life uh, that'll let you be yourself and let you talk uh, and walk in relationship with that person. Seven, serve others. Serve others. Something we all value but have a hard time actually doing. You'll become less self-conscious and have better perspective of yourself when you're making a contribution to others. Get involved in some way in pouring your life out for other people. It's a paradox, but you find yourself when you lose yourself. I remember somebody very famous saying that. You find yourself when you lose yourself by serving others. Eight, refuse the tendency to dig up the past. I know you can dig back there and say, you didn't, you weren't there for me. You, it's not gonna help you. Complaining about your parents, and thoughts about your unhappy childhood, which is characteristic of fours, by the way, uh, and your unfulfilled past and your unfulfilled relationships. Remember that you have an idealized standard of the way things should be, and, and it's hard for people to live up to that idealized standard. Your parents, your old girlfriend, they, most people can't live up to your idealized dreams, okay? S someone would like to understand you, though, if you'd, let a, if you'd open up your life and make a real effort to communicate with them right now. Just because you had a difficult upbringing does not mean that you're allowed to live with different expectations on you than on, our what, on, our, on everybody else, okay? Number nine, resist the tendency to take everything so personally. Everything is not an attack at you, all right? Everything is not aimed at you. And even if someone did intend to harm you at some point, you can get over that, all right? A critical and hostile remark about you does not reflect the whole truth about you. And it's not the universal truth about you. It's just somebody's opinion of you at that moment. You can let it go. 
Usually people are so busy worrying about themselves, they're not even thinking about you. That's a hard thought for fours to take in, is that people aren't thinking about you and they don't really want to notice you. Okay, they're doing their own life and stuck in their own unhealth that they, you know, are not necessarily trying to contribute to your unhealth. They're just unhealthy themselves. The more you dwell on those harsh things that were said to you, the more unhealthy you're going to become. So let yourself move on. Give yourself permission to move on. Say, I got things I got to get done. I can't live in this old past. Last one, number 10. Be aware of how harsh you talk to yourself. You tend to say things to yourself that you would never dream of or doing or saying to anyone else. Learn to notice that inner voice of self-rejection that you listen to and try to become a friend of yourself. Stand up for yourself and give yourself a fighting chance. All right, we're on this journey together, guys. If you love a four, be compassion, be present. If you are a four, try to be more present to life. Um, as always, thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope it's helpful to you. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we're on this journey together. I'm here to help you, and together we make this world a more beautiful place. All right, thank you guys, especially you fours, because you guys care about beauty, and you make it a beautiful place. All right, till I see you next time. Take care.